Hey guys, this is Bear from Bear's Workshop. In today's video, we're going to do an oil change on an F53 chassis for our Class A. This should have been a simple oil change, but since this is an RV, I thought it might be a little different, so we made a video. Now, whenever I do an oil change, I always have a side goal. I always want to see if I can do it without spilling one drop of oil. On most of my vehicles, I use an easy oil drain valve. That helps with the mess when draining oil. I couldn't find one that fits for the RV because the manufacturer changed their website when I went to order it so I just couldn't find it. I probably should have called them. It would not have mattered in this situation as this turned into a modern day Exxon Valdez disaster. If you think this video is helpful because you can see what not to do, then go ahead, hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button and click on the bell to receive notifications. Hopefully the next video will be a how to and not a how not to. Thanks for watching. Okay, so we are ready to start our oil change on the F53 chassis. So we've got all the parts that we need. I hope, I think I gathered up everything. We've got a rag. You always need a rag when changing oil. We have two funnels. Uh, one funnel is gonna go for underneath. We needed it a little bit wider of a mouth uh, because you need to catch the oil so it doesn't land on the frame of the F53 because the oil nut is right above suspension parts. So we're gonna use this to try and keep it clean. We've got this one for putting oil into the top. And then we've got two jugs of SAE 5W20 synthetic. This is takes six to seven quarts. It says seven, but we're gonna go to six and then we're gonna keep checking the oil and make sure it's right. I've got two oil filter wrenches. So I don't know which one's gonna work better, so I'm just gonna bring two so I don't have to keep climbing out. We've got our three quarter inch socket, or I'm sorry, our half inch socket wrench. And then we have a short and a long 5 eighths for the oil nut. That's what you need is 5 eighths. So that's what we got here and the oil filter. So we're ready to go. Let me show you what we're going to do. It's pretty easy. So let's take a look. Okay, that was some pretty bad foreshadowing as in what happens next. First thing we're looking at here is where to put in the oil. I'm pulling off the cap to make sure there's airflow to replace the draining oil. I'm also reminded of why I hate engineers who design crap like this. Getting the funnel in there is going to be a problem. Okay, we've got our funnel, we've got our 5 8 inch socket, we've got our, our drain pan. We're going to go ahead and put this underneath so that everything flows right into the drain pan and doesn't hit all the suspension. I didn't have the RV jacked up here, which is real nice because there's so much room. So I got my bucket, I got my wrench, there's the cross member support that I'm trying to avoid getting oil on. And I'm going to turn this really, really, really slow so it doesn't pop off and squirt all over the place. Okay, so going real slow, real slow. Let me make sure the camera is focused. And then just as I'm about to drop it in, yeah, that happened. Okay, well, so much for that plan. Now I have to keep this level, and it's coming out so fast the funnel is overflowing unless I have it perfectly level. So. Everything's going right into the pan. If you think of the floor as the pan, then I'm correct about this. So keeping this level was quite a chore as it kept spilling out. As you can see, I got oil everywhere on the cross member that I was trying to avoid getting it onto. So when you do this yourself, uh, you know, come up with a better plan than I had because my plan sucked. Onto the filter. Some people have said, you know, use a, use a plastic bag like a Ziploc bag or some sort of plastic bag and you put it on the filter to catch the oil. I've tried that before and I've had no luck with that. It just makes a bigger mess. But I don't know if it would have made a bigger mess in this particular case, because this still got pretty messy. It was, I think a combination of trying to hold that oil filter and the funnel at the same time probably screwed me over a little bit. But yeah, you can see my hands are painted brown with oil right now as it just drip, drip, drips. And then I'm trying to pour it into the container. I pour it right over the cross member. Good job. The oil looks like a waterfall at Las Vegas. There's oil coming, e dripping everywhere. Oil plug back in. Let's put a little oil in the, into the filter. It's always good to get some oil in the filter before you start it. No! It's also good to get oil all over the floor. And if you don't spill it accidentally the first time, do it again. Third time's a charm, as they always say. By the way, I know I said one 
rag or two rags, but I would go with at least 10 if you plan on doing it my way. If you want to do it your way, fine, bring one rag. If you're going to do it my way, bring 10 and some kitty litter, like one of those big jugs of kitty litter. So this part where we have to get the funnel up into the top, and then you have this crawl space that you need a, I don't know, a midget, a, a little person, sorry, a little person, or something to get in there and then hold it up. That, that might have worked out a little bit better. But in this case, you're going to need five people to do this, at least. you got to have one to hold the camera, one to hold the funnel, one to pour the oil, one to clean up the mess, and then you got to have that one dude that stands there and laughs his ass off at the rest of us. He tells you how to do it. So we poured oil on the battery, the AC condenser, the radiator, miscellaneous parts that were underneath, like probably I think the front bumper on the inside, things like that. And don't, uh, don't forget the floor, of course. This was the proper way to not do this. So you follow these examples perfectly and what not to do in your F53 oil change is going to go just as smooth as this one. Okay, all right. Well, we finished up with the oil change. Uh, I just checked the oil, and this is the longest dipstick I've ever seen. I don't get into things like with heavy machinery that much, so I'm sure they're bigger ones, but this thing's got to be about five feet tall. So, kind of cool. Anyway, I got myself a whip. You probably can't see it in the video, but I'm like three inches from the camera. going to knock you out. Anyway, so this was the messiest oil change I've ever done. I really thought it was going to go a lot smoother, but it didn't. It, it was horrible. Uh, I know I spilled at least a quart, maybe two quarts, all over the place. Inside the engine bay, underneath, it was horrible. But anyway, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and go ahead and hit the bell so that you get notified next time I come up with a stupid video on how to change oil. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.